Hello, welcome to this Illumity reporting webinar. We hear from clients often that they're not able to access SAP reports or they're not able to get the full use of them. So we wanted to put this webinar together to give you an idea of how you might do that. So the first thing to note is there is a section in the SAP main menu which allows you to get to all of the reports for each of the modules in one location. It's in the information systems. And then underneath that, the reports will be divided by modules. So if you were looking at accounting reports, you would see that underneath accounting and financial accounting, general ledger, you get to information systems. This is the same set of reports that you would see if you went through the accounting flow. If you continue on down, you can actually get to the basic financial statement that we all know and love. So in terms of working within the reports, I've chosen a custom Illumity report which is written in ALV. So ALV is just a standard way to, dis, to uh, present reports, but this report uses a lot of those features that ALV has, so I wanted to use this as one place where we could actually show all of those features. So the first thing to note um, is a variant. I've set up a variant for this report. And what the variant will do is it preloads all of the selections that I typically use to run this report. So I've got uh, radial button selections, um, I've got open key dates, I've got my aging that I want to use, I've got the display variants that I want to use. So the way I set this up is I would have come in here and put all of these items in and then hit save, which brings me to the variant screen, put in a name for the variant and a description, and then you would save it. To get that open at key date to always show up as the current date for when I'm running this, um, I've set up a variable. So you go in here and these are available. This is not something I had to actually configure. These are actually here and I just selected it. So the dynamic dates uh, calculation, local date is the one that I use, which is taking the date off of my machine, as opposed to system date, which would take it off of the server. You can choose either one. Once you select that, then current date is what I chose, but you can see there are a whole series of possible date options. Um, one to note would be last day of the previous month. Um, you could save multiple variants and an option could be that you have a month-end variant with this setup, and um, that could be used each time. You'd always have the previous month for closing. So I'd save this variant. In this case, I'm overwriting one that existed already. And here are the values. So now to execute the report with all of my selections. So you're going to see this report has come out very compressed quickly giving me an idea of what my receivables are, total receivables, broken down by customer, and their aging. Okay, That's how I wanted to set this up, so I could show a very compressed report, giving me high-level information. The way I got this was I actually went in here and saved the variant with the drill down set at customer number. If I actually change that to non-totals, then I see all of the open items and then the subtotal underneath there. The subtotal is coming because I actually have it turned on here. So if I take that off, I have just a complete list of all of the open items without any particular subtotals. Um, if we go across the top here, we can actually uh, sort or in ascending or descending order. So I can take this and say, okay, well, I want to sort based on dollar amount. Okay, I'm going to put it back to customer name because that's where we, we had started. I can go find any particular item. I can actually set a filter. And so if I wanted to um, look at just the items that are maybe of concern to me, so I'd say, okay, I want to see where the dollar amounts are more than a thousand, say. So I'm actually going to select this, set the filter, and because I've selected that, it said dollar amount. Um, it brings the local amount in here. And if I say I would like it to be greater than a 
thousand. So I go in here, greater than thousand dollars. And now you'll see that it's removed any items that were less than a thousand dollars. So that's just one of the things you can do to help filter out maybe some of the smaller items that you're concerned about. The other thing, the other thing we can do is we can look at the graphic display. Um, this will actually show you the items graphed age receivables. So you're actually able to see, um, if I pull over to, you're actually able to see the age receivables by uh, customer number by quantity. So that's another possibility here. Um, in terms of the actual layout that I've got working here, you can change layouts in this manner. I've got a layout here. I can go in here and say, okay, let's say I want to add the account group and I want to put it just before customer, before document number. I click on these two. I bring it over and it brings it on just above that. If I wanted to move that down, I could actually push it down one and now it's under document number or after document number. So there it is and then account group pops in at the front. So here we are and I could then sort by account group if I wanted to. Okay, so I'm going to go back to sorting by customer number and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put the subtotals back on by customer uh, name so that we can prepare for um, exporting this. So we've gone through all of these options and the exporting one was the last one that I wanted to look at. If I export this to Excel, which is typically what we would want to do, um, I can actually save in Excel, um, Excel as format. And if I click on this item, export and answer the series of questions. I'm not changing the name, but you can actually change the name so that it'll save as that particular name. It brings it up in Excel. And the key item here is that by bringing it up this way instead of in the HTML or any of the other formats, you get a fully active spreadsheet with the subtotals and the filtering um, in place. Okay. One more thing that I actually wanted to hit on the on the saving of these variants, um, display variants. In terms of the layout, if I go to save my layout, you can save layouts as user specific, which means it's only for you, or you can leave that blank and then everyone will actually be able to see the layout that you create. Um, you can put it as default and it'll become the default setting for everyone or for yourself depending on the selection that you Okay, so that was it for what we wanted to show you on reporting. If you have any questions about this, you can actually reach out to your account executive and we can arrange for training or a reporting workshop where we can look at any gaps that you feel that you have in reporting um, or items that you want to explore further. Thank you.